Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather, I am a styling, skincare, hair care, self care enthusiast. I don't have any training in anything, I just have people ask me sometimes my thoughts and opinions on some of these things, so I just figured I'd make a YouTube channel to share what I know. So, today I'm gonna be doing my second styling video, very exciting, and I wanted to talk about proportions, because I feel like a lot of people talk about like colors and patterns, but proportion isn't something people tend to, to talk about a lot. So. Um, basically, what I mean by proportion is the shapes and, and sizes and perception that you want people to see about your body. So, um, you know, you can choose to just sort of have, you know, not a lot of shape, like have a baggier item with a baggier item. You can choose to sort of emphasize one thing or another. You can choose to kind of emphasize everything with a tighter garment. Um, and honestly, this, like, the rules I'm gonna be telling you about, these aren't rules that you actually have to follow as with all of these rules, makeup, hair care, skincare, any of it, like you don't actually have to do any of it. The only thing I would say that you probably should do for everybody is wear sunblock, but like that's, anyway. So um, basically, you know, people are gonna judge you by what you look like in public, what you look like in a job interview, what you look like when you go to work, or just, you know, if you're trying to date or something like that, uh, just sort of out in the world, people make judgments about um, how you look. And it's not right, it's not. Um, I want everyone to be comfortable with what they're wearing and what they're doing. Um, but if you want to sort of project a certain thing into the world, then I think that's that's sort of where I'm coming from here with some of these suggestions of how to put things together. And honestly, sometimes people just don't like they they know they like a piece of clothing. They just don't know how to how to work it into anything. So um, hopefully that's what uh, this video is going to help you guys out with today. So um, I am wearing. Uh, oh, also we might have a, a kitten hop in on the session. Hello, Neko. Okay. Um, so I'm going to turn this over here because. What I did is I pulled some of my own um, outfits that I can show you guys, and I'm wearing this sort of legging ensemble so I can try things on and sort of show it to you in real time. So um, the first thing I'm gonna pick up is this guy right here. So this is clearly a shirt dress, right? It looks like a men's um, dress shirt. That's what shirt dresses are. Also, everything that I've picked out here is at a lot of different price points. So um, this is from, I wanna say Walmart. The thing with Walmart clothes, um, I find that the things I buy there are actually pretty well made, but um, you have to be careful of the sizes because their sizing isn't always what you expect it to be. So I think this is like a couple sizes bigger than what I usually buy. It was like a 2X or a 3X or something, but you have to try things on, right? So this shirt dress here, it has pockets, which is great. Um, and it's a little bit on the shorter side. So something like this, you know, um, what I like to emphasize on myself is the uh, as much of an hourglass shape as I can possibly get, um, which I do sort of have. So I have a, a larger like shoulder area. I do have a larger chest, but like that's, that's almost besides the point because of the size of my shoulders. And then my waist, my natural waist is actually pretty low. On most um, women, your natural waist um, is going, like where your smallest is right below your rib cage. So that's why the um, empire waist things, ampere waist, however you wanna pronounce it, that was really popular for a long time because it would cinch you in at your smallest part and then balloon out. My smallest part is three or four inches lower than the average person. So I tend to wear like, I, I do sometimes wear this with the waist cinching belt, but then the problem becomes you can't use the pockets, right? So this is a little bit on the shorter side and it's, you know, it's kind of slouchy. You can wear it with leggings, um, as you can see. So this, this is creating sort of like a one shape situation. If um, uh, I didn't pull a belt out, but if I had a belt on, it would create more of sort of a, an hourglass looking shape. And again, that's one of the shape options that you have as, um, as a woman or a female presenting person um, to present to the world. If that's, if that's the type of shape that you want to project, then what you have to do is emphasize that waist. And that happens a lot with a belt. But you don't actually need a belt to emphasize the waist. And I'm gonna show that to you with my next dress. So um, this is one of the more inexpensive items, right? By the way, I'm gonna hang all this back up and everything after the video. So I'm just gonna throw it over there for now. Um, this dress, I love this dress so much. This is from Anthropology. Um, I got it on sale. I get everything from Anthropology on sale. I never buy anything at full price. And so uh, my mom actually calls this my milkmaid dress, and you'll see why in a second. Um, I love green, personally. Green is my favorite color. It looks really good on me. Uh, my eyes are green. It just really goes along with everything. And so you just have to get this situated here. So this dress right here, uh, it also has pockets, which is great. And you can see that there's this elastic. So a lot of times the elastic in these dresses, um, it's so like when you move at all, um, the elastic like moves up your body, which it is kind of doing that on me, but the lower part of the elastic is at the smallest part of my waist. 
So now it's a little blousey up here, right? So if um, I'm basically wearing a sports bra under this outfit, so you kind of, you can't really tell. And my arms are not really my favorite part of myself either. I don't like hate them or anything, but if I can cover them with a blousey sleeve, I really like that. So I really like this dress because it's creating a waist on me, right? So it's giving me that hourglass shape that I might want. It's sort of hiding my arms. Um, it is a little sort of peasant blousey looking, but I don't personally mind that. And then the only problem with this is you can see how far it comes down towards the bottom of my legs. So another thing about proportion is a lot of times what people are trying to do is they're trying to make themselves look taller because when you look taller, you look thinner. But like thinness shouldn't, number one, it shouldn't always be the goal of clothing, thinness. Number two, um, there's just like short people in the world and they deserve to wear long clothes if they want to. Um, and uh, you know, so there's, there's some factors that kind of go into that. Like, is that, is that something that you care about? Is that something that you want to look for? So um, with myself, I am five foot five and a half and I have short legs. Um, I was actually supposed to have, um, my right leg was going to be two inches longer than my left and I had surgery. It's like a whole thing. So if I wanted to elongate my form, what you could do is you could either take this dress up a little bit. So maybe bring it to like right below my knees. You could take it to like a tailor and make it shorter. Or I could wear high heeled shoes, right? So when my legs look longer, it's, it's like I'm standing like this all the time because I'm wearing high heeled shoes. Um, I tend not to wear heels too often. I do have um, a good amount of them, but I, I don't wear them super often. So um, this is dress number two. I really like this. If you can find something with a waist definition, then like the work of making a, a socially acceptable shape has already sort of been done for you. But I know this is, this is not everybody's style, right? So just an option. That's what this whole video is. It's just giving you guys some options, right? Okay. So next thing I'm going to pick up is going to be this sweater. So I love this sweater. You're not going to believe where I got this sweater. This sweater was a dollar at an estate sale because I went to an estate sale where the person was a hoarder basically. Um, and so this sweater was just sitting on the bed. Um, like I guess somebody dug it out of a pile or something um, and it was just sitting on the bed and here it is. So I don't always love sweaters like this um, for a couple of reasons. So number one, I tend, the kitten's playing with something back here. I'm just gonna move it. Will you stop doing that please? Don't do that. Okay, so put that over here. All right, so um, a sweater. Yes, so a couple of things. I don't love stuff that comes super high to my neck, but this, I think this is called a mock turtleneck. Um, so that's, that's not so bad. It's not like choking me. My mom and I do this. We can't have things that are too close to our necks. Number two, I tend to sweat like a lot. Um, and so I get really warm in the winter. I tend to wear layers. So um, this sometimes is a little too warm for me, but as I get older, the kitten's moving the iPad. As I get older, something like this is really, um, is, is good for me because I get, I get a little bit colder. So, oh my gosh, golly, you're just gonna make this video super interesting. All right, taking the kitten down, okay. Um, and then number three, you can see this, this is, you know, um, as a slightly larger woman, I'm like a 12, 14 most of the time, um, you know, if you, if you want to make more shape, if you don't want to add more volume to yourself, um, then, then this type of sweater that's a little bit thicker, like this just might not be a thing that you want to wear. Um, and honestly, for a long time, I didn't wear this type of sweater for that reason, even if I was, you know, extra cold, but it's like, like, I just want to be comfortable. Like all the stuff I'm showing you is super comfortable. And like, I just, I, that doesn't bother me anymore. What bothers me is when I don't feel good about what I'm wearing and I don't feel confident. So let me show you something. I'm going to pull out uh, this pair of pants. These pants are ridiculous. I have quite a few pairs of pants that I call clown pants. And clearly these are clown pants. So um, these were on the sale sale rack of anthropology. Um, I think when everything was said and done, they were like $7. And they are just a smidge big on me. And so anthropology makes a lot of these cropped pants that have like a pattern on them. And so that's what these are. These are technically cropped. So when you see over here, like they just come to my ankles. And so this is actually an outfit that I have worn around town. Um, so, you know, we have these balloony legs, we have like a not super form fitting sweater. And so it's not, it's not creating like the stereotypical shape that a lot of people want to create. But like, I just don't care because I feel super cute. It has pockets once again, um, you know, I'm matching the, the white in the sweater with the white in the polka dots. It's interesting because it's got the cables here on the sweater. I might wear like a necklace. Um, when I wear the sweater, I really like wearing my hair like piled on top of my head too. So it's just, this is, this doesn't bother me. Like if I just wanna wear something sort of shapeless, then this is what I'm gonna wear, cause I like it. Um, 
so um so yeah it really just like like what do you want to project into the world the shape of your clothes can help you project that um so now we're gonna move on to something else here so this next thing i'm not actually gonna put on because it's like a struggle to put it on but i have recently started getting into crop tops so this is uh it's labeled as like a, a sports bra basically on amazon um, and this was like $16, $17. And I wore this crop top with a pair of like balloony pants like this. So if you want to play with proportion, but like you still want to, you want to have like a stereotypical shape. Um, basically if you wear one baggy thing, then the other thing should be more form fitting. So if you're wearing something baggy on your legs, wear something form fitting on top or the other way around. If you're wearing like a tunic on top, wear something form fitting on your legs. That way, um, you know, the, the viewer, I guess you could say, can still see your shape. Um, and still see that like there's a body in there um, but you know they're not seeing sort of everything and you'll notice that a lot like on the red carpet too if um, if an actor or an actress wears something like tight on their legs then they're gonna wear a bit of a boxier item on top most of the time or if an actress you know they have cutouts in the chest of their dress then they're gonna have sleeves on it because they don't want to show everything all at once it creates this this um, interpretation that people don't necessarily want, um, th these assumptions that people don't want made about them. So you can control some of those assumptions by what you wear. Again, if you want, you don't have to do any of this. So this is really great for wearing with balloony pants. It's also really great for wearing with balloony skirts, which I actually didn't bring any of those out, but that's okay. Um, it's, it's, the, it's the same idea, right? So a crop top, if you're new to crop tops like I am, um, you might want to find like a higher waisted item that gets closer to your natural waist and then the crop top can stop like right here. So you're only showing an inch or two of skin, um, but it's, I don't know, it's kind of fun, especially as, you know, a slightly larger woman. I'm not, I know I'm not like a ginormous person, but a slightly larger person, it's like, I can wear crop tops. And like, even if you feel like you can't wear a crop top or it's not creating the shape you want, or, you know, there's, this is bringing up some body issues for you. Like if you're comfortable in a crop top, who cares what the shape looks like? like you're covering your top, right? You're, you're covering things that need to be covered by law. Wear whatever the heck you want, honestly. Um, maybe not to a job interview, cause that, you know, uh, but like you're just going to a pool or you're going out in the city one day or you're hanging out with your friends, wear the gosh darn crop top. Life is too short to not wear the things that you wanna wear, okay? Um, put that guy over there. And so uh, the next thing, actually, this is another baggy thing. I didn't. I didn't edit this quite as well as I wanted to, that's okay. So this thing is from ASOS, and I love this thing so much. It basically looks the same on me as it does on the hanger, so I'm not gonna put it on. This is actually one garment, right? So if I'm sick, or if it's really cold outside in the winter time, I will sleep in this. I will do work from home in this. Um, this is the most comfortable thing in the world. This is actually a part of my, part of my closet that I labeled my shmata part, which means rag, I wanna say in Yiddish. So this is not something that like, if I wanna show off my shape to go on a date, this is not it, right? <laughs> um, but this is super comfy clothes. And if this is the type of stuff that you like to wear, by all means, wear it. It's just not gonna create any kind of like hourglass or proportional shape. But again, you don't actually have to care about that, right? So um, another thing I'm gonna put on real quick here, take off the pants, didn't even have to unbutton the pants. So let's say you have a tight, tighter bottoms, right? So you wanna show off your legs, you're wearing some leggings. What do we put on top? A lot of people say leggings are okay as pants. I, like me personally, that's just not my cup of tea. Like I will wear leggings just as a bottom, but the thing with leggings is I have to cover my behind. Um, I have to feel confident with whatever that looks like because it feels it feels too exposed to me. It's not, it's not my thing. So the way I style leggings or even like tighter jeans is I will take something sort of like a tunic, like this. So um, this tunic is actually from, uh, I wanna say Chico's. And so yeah, I'm in my 30s and I shop at Chico's and I don't care. So Chico's once in a while does have some cute stuff. If you wait for their stuff to go on sale, it works out pretty well. And so this covers my behind, right? It's, it's tunic length. It's not like, you can't wear it by itself. It's not a dress, right? And as I mentioned, I love green. So this outfit here makes me really happy. Um, I might wear a longer tank top in the front, but like this in general, right? You have sort of a blousier thing on top and you have a tighter thing on the bottom. Um, by the way, if some of this, um, if you are a, a person that has um, breasts and you want to wear a bra, um, then uh, uh, you might want to consider like different types of bras. So I'm basically wearing like a super comfy, it's almost like a, it's almost like a sports bra, but it's easier to get on. 
Um, so if you want to wear like a real bra with um, an underwire or get a fitting done or even like a push-up bra, all of that stuff is going to change your proportions. So if you have a larger chest sometimes, it makes it look like um, uh, your, your body is a little bit bigger than it is because it kind of pushes that, that flesh up. And when you, when you make your neck look a little shorter by pushing this up, um, that in turn makes you look a little shorter, which in turn makes you look a little bit um, wider. So you might not care about that, which is totally fine. I don't care about it. Um, but that's, that's a thing that happens. Um, so um, just as an FYI, a lot of these things might look a little different. Your clothes might fit differently um, if you choose to get a bra fitting and really wear a bra that fits or wear a bra with a little extra padding or a little extra um, retention if you're a larger chested person. That makes a big difference with this proportion conversation. Um, also, you might not even want to button this. So you see how what I've done here is this is black underneath and it creates this line. So this line shape, it's drawing the eye upward, which once again makes you look taller, which makes you look thinner. Again, might not be a thing that you want to do, but if it is a thing you want to do, you can do it, right? Just by leaving this open. Um, something that drives me crazy is you'll see in movies or something, people will button the button that's right here and they'll leave the rest open. And I'm like, why do you do that? Because that doesn't look good. This is no one's smallest part on their body. I don't think literally anyone. Um, and uh, it's it's just, I never like it. What, again, make whatever shape you want. I don't like it, not my cup of tea. Button the button that's below your rib cage down here. Okay. So, um, another thing, outerwear. You can do this shape play with outerwear. So, um, for a long time there were just, you know, coats that like were mostly designed to sort of keep you warm and that was it. And you'll find a lot of very utilitarian coats out there. Um, and now you're starting to find coats that have like a really defined waist as like part of the coat design. So it's keeping you warm, but like there's like a thing that, that cinches in here. If you don't want that, then a good option for you is going to be a swing coat. So swing coats are not necessarily for the coldest, coldest day of the year. This coat, as you can see, it doesn't even have buttons, right? So this is for spring and fall type of thing, maybe a warm um, uh, uh, December day type of thing, and it does have pockets. Guess where I got this coat? I got it at an estate sale, once again. Guess how much this coat was? Five dollars, ha! Huh. So I think this coat's really well made. Um, I'm pretty sure the outside is wool. Uh, it's pretty well taken care of. I probably should get it cleaned at some point, but like, it's a nice coat. So if you're looking for nicer clothes and you can't spend a lot of money, um, in addition to thrift stores, I would definitely check out estate sales because they always have a lot of really cool stuff. I've gotten really great stuff at estate sales before. So um, uh, look into a swing coat if you want to play with like a non-shaped shape, right? So I'm just sort of blobby in this, but that's okay. It's a swing coat. That's the shape of the coat. This one I think is older because it does have the shoulder pads. Um, modern coats generally don't have super big shoulder pads in it like this. So there's that. And then finally, I wanna show how to make a waist with a pair of pants and a top, right? So um, this is one of my favorite white tops. I have an entire white top section in my closet. <laughs> um, and so uh, for me, as I mentioned, I do have a slightly larger chest and a slightly smaller waist. So a lot of times what happens with these button up shirts is they're way too big in the waist and then they don't even button in the top here because it can't it can't accommodate my top half which is like I know it's like oh my gosh she's complaining about being too big in the bus it's like well it can be a problem finding clothes right like I have a friend she is five foot ten and she's a double zero and you know she's a hundred hundred pounds soaking wet and she has a hard time finding clothes and you know do skinny people still have some um, privileges in this country absolutely you can't argue against that there's thin privilege everywhere. I even have thin privilege as like uh, a person that is, you know, not over the average, which is a size 16 in this country, in the United States. Um, but that doesn't mean that that person doesn't still have issues finding clothes that fit them. So I like shopping with her. Um, you know, we, we complement each other's sort of shopping styles. I can really help her find things that, that work for her. So anyway, um, I love wearing a, a white shirt with a pair of jeans. You might notice that I didn't use jeans in any of these demonstrations today. That was on purpose to hopefully give people some inspiration for some things that are a little bit, um, you know, out of their comfort zone or it's not just jeans and a t-shirt, right? These are all things I wear constantly all the time. Actually, except for the cocoon coat because I literally just bought it today at an estate sale. So um, now what I'm getting is this pair of pants right here. So this pair of pants is uh, by a um, company called Farm Rio. Farm Rio, and they do sell their stuff out of um, Anthropology, and it doesn't go on sale very often, but I do have a couple of their pieces that have gone on sale that are really awesome. So uh, these pants are just like the teeniest bit tight on me, just teeny tiny bit. Um, so what I do 
There we go. Oh wait, they're not tight anymore. I have lost some weight in the pandemic. I'm one of those weirdos. Um, so I want to line these buttons up here with the front and I want to be able to see this banding, right? And so um, I don't want to pull this up too high because then it does some weird things to like the camel toe area and I don't want to pull it down too low because literally I can't, right? So it looks cute with this whole thing tucked in, but what I actually prefer to do is untuck the back and just tuck the front. So I don't know why I really like this, but I feel like it makes a more interesting shape. I keep almost stepping on the kitten, silly thing. Um, it just, it's just, it's more interesting, right? And so if you want to, to tuck in the entire thing here, like you totally can, it's not like it looks bad, but what I also have is I have a long blue slouchy cardigan that I wear over this. So the blue in the cardigan picks up the blue in the pants. So the whole thing kind of pulls together. I create a waist, and this waistband's here anyway, which is creating a waist for me. Um, and then I have sort of the, the cover over it. And then the thing with these pants is that they are a little too long on me, so I definitely have to wear a pair of high heels, right? So there are definitely a lot of pants where you have the option if you wanna wear heels, if you don't, you can put on whatever shoes you want. Um, again, it's the proportion thing, but um, you know you don't actually have to wear heels. If I don't want these pants to drag on the floor, I have to wear heels. So keep that in mind when you're, you're buying stuff like this. Also, like a wider leg pant anyway, um, if you wanna keep the proportion, um, the way, you, you know, that stereotypical thinner shape that people seem to want, um, then you should probably wear heels with wider pants anyway because it helps to elongate the leg. When your legs look longer, I know it makes your torso look shorter, but longer looking legs makes your body look taller, which makes you look thinner. It all goes back to that. Anyway, um, I really hope this style video helps somebody. Um, I'm gonna do a video about colors eventually as well, but you know, I figured proportion was a good place to start because you know, it, it doesn't matter what color the clothes are in your clothes are in your closet, you can start to put them together in a way that makes the shapes that you want. So the stereotypical shape is an hourglass, but don't feel obligated to do that. Just wear what makes you feel comfortable and what, you know, covers up what needs to be covered up from a uh, law perspective. So if there's anything I can answer um, about styling, please let me know, put it down in the comments. And I hope you guys have a really awesome rest of your day. Thanks so much. Bye.